Hi, I'm Dan Spieler breaking into programming here once more today as Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett prepares to deliver a press conference today after the protest uh, that eventually uh, turned violent in some cases, leaving behind significant damage downtown. Mayor Joe Hogsett and the police chief speaking. Let's listen in live. This evening, peace returned to our streets. And that frankly would not be possible without residents who make sacrifices to stay at home for the safety of a grateful city. But I am also mindful that there were moments yesterday where once again we saw interactions between law enforcement and protesters that saw that fragile peace brought into question. A bottle is thrown. A tear gas canister is fired. A crowd closes in. Violence then ensues. These are moments that develop and frankly dissipate in the blink of an eye. But that does not diminish their importance, nor the fact that we have an obligation to examine and render judgment on the conduct of our police officers. Each and every time, that force is used by an individual who has sworn their service to the public's protection. Chief Taylor and his command staff will be addressing uh, what transpired yesterday uh, in greater detail and what our plans are for this evening. But let me take this opportunity Let me take this opportunity to say that, like so many, I have serious concerns about some of the interactions between our officers and protesters from this weekend. They also represent the exact reason why we recently adopted changes to the way our department reviews uses of force by police officers, where in the past that review would have been quickly made by a supervisor with no review board oversight, unless deadly force was used, our new use of force review board will have jurisdiction over non-lethal incidents, such as we saw yesterday. And that board will have significant civilian participation in the process. That is a step in the right direction. But those reviews will take time and I know it will be frustrating for some. It's frustrating to me. But I do believe that time will allow for a full review of whether these actions were within policy. I also want to acknowledge that those policies themselves are not above reproach. That is why, as previously announced, I want to reiterate that I've asked Chief Taylor to submit a reformed use of force policy uh, to the General Orders Committee within the next two weeks. I would urge that even as we continue to work to ensure that peaceful demonstrations are permitted to the greatest extent possible, these voices of change continue to work with us to ensure that those who might do harm to our city and their movement are not allowed to destroy the march of progress that must move forward if we are truly to be a city and a country of which we can be proud. Chief. Hello. We want to thank all of our community members who continue to protest peacefully. To everyone who observed last night's curfew and voluntarily returned home, I want to thank you especially. Our downtown was safe and without major incident after nightfall. We want to make sure all of our members understand that our agency remains steadfast in protecting our citizens' right to peacefully protest. But as I've repeatedly said, we swear an oath to protect the safety of the people in this community, and we take that very seriously. That will remain our priority today and always. 
We have been made aware of several videos from this past weekend, and we are looking into each incident to ensure the actions taken are in compliance with IMPD's policies and procedures. One of these videos shows force being used during an arrest of several individuals. I have directed our internal affairs unit to immediately conduct a speedy and thorough investigation into this incident. While I don't have enough information yet to make a determination on any disciplinary action, I can tell you that this type of incident is exactly the type of incident the new, that the new Use of Force Review Board we are creating is aimed at reviewing. We are also aware of a video that shows a peaceful demonstration impacted by the deployment of tear gas. Based on everything that we know, these peaceful individuals were impacted by our efforts as IMPD officers took to address aggressive and potentially uh, violent individuals located nearby. These individuals encircled a group of officers who attempted to arrest someone that was spray painting the very symbol of our city, our monument. As I said yesterday, tear gas distrib is distributed widely and drifts with the wind. My sincere apologies for anyone who was in this peaceful uh, uh, downtown, has been acting peacefully in downtown this weekend that was inadvertently impacted by the tear gas. This is exactly why we need our public's health. Every resident of our city deserves to have an opportunity to peacefully demonstrate. They do not need the right, uh, they do not have the right to inflict hurt on others, public property, or our city's businesses. A curfew will again be in place tonight from 8 p.m. till 4 a.m. tomorrow. That means after 8 p.m. tonight, no one is allowed to travel public roads or be in public spaces with a few exceptions. Many of you have probably already received an alert that was pushed to our entire community informing them of tonight's restricted travel. I have heard some concern about uh, the alert being understandable to residents uh, that speak other languages. I want everyone to know that this alert has now been distributed in Spanish if a resident's phone is set for Spanish. Like last night, we will make multiple announcements that, to the curfew prior to 8 p.m to allow residents time to travel back home. Travel in the downtown area will be restricted as it has been over the last couple nights. At this time, Deputy Chief Josh Barker will be here to answer any specific operational questions related to last night's events or our efforts for tonight to protect peaceful protests and keep all of the members of our community safe. Good afternoon. Any any questions? I can take? Considering what the mayor just said <clears throat> on his reaction to what he viewed or heard about what some of your officers may have been involved in the last couple nights, does that change your approach or your directives to your commanders on how they should deport themselves tonight? Uh, you know, it doesn't. I think it's uh, I think it's part of the larger operational discussion that we've had with our officers. Um, you know, I. Th I it, I've said before it's important to highlight that these these gatherings have been very fluid up to this point uh, and, and like the chief expressed um, the people that have come downtown to peacefully assemble uh, have my apologies if they've been sort of stuck in a situation where actions had to been ta to be taken against um, those that are conducting criminal behavior. Uh, it's an unfortunate realization that we've come to, especially over the past several days. Um, we have stressed that our officers remain calm and professional in the face of unbelievable odds that they faced with these crowds over the last uh, four days now. Um, and we're stressing that supervisors uh, deployed with those officers continue to monitor the situations as best as we can. Did IMPD lose control of downtown Saturday night? We did not lose control. I, I, I don't think that that's an appropriate characterization. Um, now, obviously, we were all down here, and there were times where officers were scrambling to reassess situations in a very rapid manner, and it looked like there was some disorganization on our part. However, uh, there was clear uh, communications with the command center, and we were redeploying those resources as rapidly as possible not only to monitor the riotous crowds, but to answer uh, the calls for services and the calls for assistance that were coming in simultaneously throughout the downtown area. Are you directing your officers to attempt to use force? They feel they 
need to use force? How are they being directed to do so? I guess I would say that um, you know our our department has general orders and policies in place that directs and governs how we utilize force. Uh, every officer is trained in those policies and held to those standards. Well, the arrests were definitely valid. Yes. For non violent crimes? The arrests were valid, uh, especially those that have to do with curfew violations. Now, whether or not Prosecutor Mears decides to actually file those charges, that's apparently uh, he's made a decision not to, and, and that's certainly up to him. Uh, Prosecutor Mears and I feel have, have a good relationship, uh, and uh, if there was concern on our part, we would certainly talk with them, but the uh, actions that the officer took. That took during those arrests were valid, yes. Regarding the first video you referenced, how long will that take to go under uh, review? This will be the last question. Well, we, uh, we just, I was just made known of, of that first video uh, late last night. Uh, we need to do a thorough investigation, but as I said, it will be a speedy one, so I hope to have some, some more answers uh, within this week. Thank Mayor, you. if you knew Friday morning, Friday night, and Saturday morning, there was potential things were going to come up loose Saturday night. Why wasn't there a curfew? Why wasn't traffic shut off, as we've seen with other big downtown events? If Friday night was a warning, why did Saturday night occur? Well, Russ, um, first and foremost, uh, a curfew is a very drastic step to take uh, because it not only impacts uh, those it is intended to impact, but it, it impacts the entire city. Uh, frankly, we were having discussions all day Saturday with, uh, with uh, uh, protest organizers, uh, and while no agreements were made, while no guarantees were extended, uh, I had reason to believe that my request that the protests run from 4 p.m. till 7 or 7.30 uh, would be honored. That is what we were hopeful for. It didn't happen the way we all wanted it to happen, uh, which led us to take the drastic step yesterday of uh, imposing a curfew on the city for last night. And we've taken yet again another drastic step today to impose a curfew on the city tonight to bring peace to the city. So um, to the extent that uh, curfew was uh, considered, it certainly was for Saturday. Uh, but a judgment was made that perhaps uh, with cooperation and collaboration we could avoid the violence that had uh, unfortunately been uh, in the city on Friday night. Well, that Thank assumes you. that everybody that was going to be around was peaceful and leaving at 7 as opposed to the people who were going to show up at 8.30. And then the other part of my question is if we've shut down traffic downtown during Black Expo, why wasn't there a decision to do that Saturday night? Because when I was there, it was the vehicles driving through between 8 and 9 that really got things revved up. Yeah. Well, I would simply say I, I don't make the decision about shutting down traffic. Josh probably can uh, answer that more uh, uh, directly, Russ. I will tell you that uh, it, is, uh, my, it is my belief uh, that a vast uh, majority of people did, in fact, leave the downtown area as they were requested to do. Uh, between the hours of 7 and 8 um, and unfortunately there were those who remained or who came down uh, after the sun went down uh, who decided to um, engage in uh, vandalism, looting uh, and uh, other forms of uh, criminal activity and so uh, after experiencing that on Saturday night uh, we took the significant step to shut the city down last night, and we've taken the, the signific another significant step to shut the city down tonight. Josh, you want to talk about the traffic? Um, so in regards to the traffic pattern Saturday night, I, I would agree with you that the vehicular traffic did cause an added component of confusion when we were trying to manage and, and even have our officers have a capability to navigate through some of that vehicular traffic to address the crowds. Um, the traffic pattern was closed down on Saturday. That was not completed till around 11.30 or 12 o'clock. Um, 
you know, we made that adjustment in hopes that it would have a positive impact. It did, and I think that's why last night we were able to introduce that traffic pattern much earlier. Um, if you were down here last night, you'll notice that that traffic pattern went into effect about 6.30. And again, we experienced a high level of success with that in managing not only the crowds that were downtown, but helping us to facilitate the clearing of the downtown area with the curfew. Thank you. All right, Mayor Joe Hogsett there along with IMPD officials answering questions from our Russ McQuaid and other members of the media today on the protests over the weekend and the ensuing actions by the city to try and keep the calm tonight. Again, a curfew in effect once again tonight, starting at 8 p.m. and going till 4 in the morning. Of course, we're going to have much more on the aftermath of all these protests coming up at the top of the hour, first at 4. But right now, we return you to regular...